Well, hello everyone. We're back. It's episode 151 of Playing With Perspective, the Suspended Animation Podcast. I hope everybody's doing well. I have the lovely Gemma Lumicheesi with me today. How are you, Gemma? I am fabulous. Thank you so much for having me on. How are you? My pleasure. You know, we've been planning this one for a while, so I'm glad that we're finally recording it. And That's it's going to be all about my favorite topic, which is content. And in particular, why the word should is the most dangerous word in the English language. <laughs> so for everybody out there who doesn't know Gemma, Gemma is the founder of Contently Driven. She teaches you how to write copy that sounds like you and how to truly be yourself. Gemma's business mission is to help more people be themselves both in business and in life. So welcome once again, Gemma. Thank you. It's quite the introduction, actually. <laughs> uh, absolutely. <laughs> so I'd love to get into the details and a bit about your story because, you know, we're just really getting to know each other and what each other do for the first time. So tell us a bit about what your story is. How did you come to do what you do? Why do you love writing and content so much? Let us know what's, what's behind all this. Awesome. Yes. How long have we got? No. <laughs> well, interestingly enough, writing is, it's not so much something I fell into, but when I was a really young child, I used to draw and write for hours. Um, it was a really amazing way for me to relax. I was like the Duracell bunny when I was a child. I never stopped. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just went and went and went. I loved it. You know, I, I did so much at school. I did so many extracurricular activities. Wow. I would run, ride my bike for hours. I just kept going. You know, I loved it. Energy reservoir. Yeah. I'm, honestly, like, I just, yeah, it's crazy. I just went and went and went. And it wasn't so much my body. It was my mind as well, you know. So drawing and writing was something that really was my out time and my relaxed time. Okay. Uh, so I guess once I started writing uh, in school, a lot more creative writing, by default, I kept winning all these competitions for creative writing without really knowing. Wow, amazing. Well done. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So my teacher, my teachers all the time, like, this is fantastic. Can I enter it in this competition? I'm like, eh, all right. And I would win it, you know. So <laughs> I sort of figured, I'm oh, good at this right <laughs> that's how I really got into writing uh and another thing from that as well I loved ads like television ads yep. so I was the weird sort of child that would you know tape things back on VCR and would actually pause the television show and tape the ads oh my god the ads. everybody yeah. wants to fast forward the ads and you're taping them and re-watching yeah. I loved them I loved mm -hmm. Ads. I loved jingles. I loved all of that. And I still have all of my VCRs with the old school 90s ads on there. No way. <laughs> <Yeah>. Weirdo. <laughs> and yeah, so when I was a child, I'm like, one day I'm going to write one of these. I'm going to write these. I'm going to be the person who writes the ads. And yeah, so I guess once it came time to finish school and go to uni, off, off I went and studied advertising. And I, yeah, the rest, the rest of history there. The rest so. of history. And then, then, then the world of the content creation yeah. took off, took off and then off you yes. went that was yeah it. absolutely yeah <laughs> awesome and so do you work with any particular type of content more than another or what's your your niche yeah sure uh my niche and now is something that well of course like a niche is it's the people we want to work with right so i work with uh solo business owners solo female business owners generally so it it, it doesn't really matter what type of industry yep. uh a lot of the time it falls into creatives just mm -hmm. the way it is you know type of like designers and things like that uh but i really work closely now with solo uh, female business owners more so you know helping them write their websites and write their copy and write their blogs to bring out their voices nice. you know and that really resonates with me now um, and I absolutely love it to help them in that way because uh, I, I was a female business owner that sort of hid behind my words as well and, you know, thought I should be a particular way, yep. you know. Coming out of corporate is yep. most of the people I work with and we sort of all have very similar ways in which 
I guess we were shut down in corporate and lost our creative touch and had to, yeah. you know, tick the X, Y, Z boxes and never do anything fun. <laughs> oh God, you, you paint a great picture of the corporate world. <laughs> yes, no, no offense to the corporate world, but there are many of us that really missed our creativity while yeah. being in there, yeah. you know. I, mean, I can understand. Um, and I mean, that's something that's your, you're really big on is your brand voice, your mm -hmm. authenticity, truly being yourself. What does that mean to you? And, you know, how, why is it so important? Yeah, of course. Uh, well, in, in general, a, a brand voice is, is so important. Whatever type of business you are from a giant corporation to, you know, family run business to a solo owned business, it, it, it doesn't matter. You know, and a lot of people understand the way your brand looks, you know, so they put a lot of time and effort into the visuals and everything. But the way your brand looks is just as important as how it sounds, you know, and especially in a lot of content now, like everything that we consume is online. And if we're not reading it, we're watching a video with words. You know, it, it's more important now than, than ever before. So as important as the visuals are, it's so important the way everything sounds. And it's also for that consistency, you know. So, for example, if, if you, you know, writing blogs and putting up social posts in a very consistent way and then you go to work with a client and you're completely different. So, you know, then, yeah, then how you sound and the words you use. It's, it's incongruent and then you, you break that trust. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, so that that's, I guess, why brand voices is so important. But again, for any kind of business, it's the way you speak, the mannerisms you have. It brings out your personality in words. Yeah. And I think especially for big corporations where we're often so far detached from them, it humanizes them as well. Yeah. Absolutely. You know? yeah. yeah. And so why and do you think, why do you think people tend to hide behind their words? I mean, what, what, why do they do that? Well, how long have we got to get? No. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you need. Really interesting one. And I think it, it goes quite hand in hand with authenticity yeah. and that, and it's, it's because many, many people really are afraid to be themselves, you know, and especially now when as much as you publish a blog pretty much the entire world can actually see that sure. you know what i mean it's available not just to your local radio station and maybe you know six hundred thousand people maybe a million might hear it for example yeah. the whole world can actually read what you're writing you're and exposed you, totally exposed knowing it it's terrifying Really, you know, so it really is that that fear that, that so many people don't quite understand that they have. And you can really start to figure out if you do have this fear of it is, you know, if you're, say, writing a blog post and it should take you two hours, maybe it's taken three days, and then you're pushing off another three days, four days until you post it. Yeah. And then maybe you're going back and changing some of the words, you know. And it really is that hidden fear that people will see me, they'll see what I read, they won't like me, you know, all, all of that. And it, it was such an interesting thing that I uncovered that so many people do it and hide behind their words in this way without even knowing it. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's, it's, yeah, it's really interesting. And it's kind of trying to paint a picture of someone that they're not really. Yeah, for sure. The rest of and, them. Yeah, what a really interesting way to see if you're doing it is with some of the words you're even using. Mm. So if you're using uh, like modifiers that weaken what you're saying, okay. you know, so if you're using things like, oh, it's a little this or adverbs, like possibly, actually, oh, maybe, yeah, like you know, you're really yeah. like it's, weakening. It's like you're tippy toeing. For sure. yeah. yeah, you're really weakening what, what you're saying and it's out of that fear that you're probably hiding a little bit and not being that bold, yeah. uh, you know, out of fear. So it's it's really interesting to start to review the way you're writing things as yeah. well. So true. And I, I'm really big on that. Like I, I always preach as well, you know, if you're good at what you do and you're passionate about what you do, put content out there with confidence, you know, and, and easier said than done, I know. Some people, you know, find that difficult. But if you're not confident about 
what you do and that's going to translate into your um, into your content people are going to pick that up in a heartbeat and nobody's mm -hmm. going to even go near you if they think that you're not even confident about what you do so using those modifiers can be quite detrimental absolutely it's yeah. it's, it's really true you've really nailed it there as well you know if you're not using that bold language and if you're not being you know confident in what you say then yeah people aren't going to be confident in what yeah. you say as yeah. well you know, you know? That up you know we we're per human beings perceive things so well you know we sure do <laughs> yeah it's, it's amazing fascinating yeah. and so why is the word should such a dangerous word then <laughs> Oh, goodness me. Now, this could be a little bit of my um, copy coming into or my copywriting coming into my <laughs> coaching mindset world. But it's really interesting because the word should is so dangerous because if you're telling yourself you should do something, you should be this, you should be something, you know, it's, it's really damaging to you, I think inside yeah. you know and there's so many times or a lot of people are sort of waiting to arrive somewhere you know like oh you know i should be making this amount of money or i should be this further up in my career you know and it's usually because they're waiting because they think something will happen when they're there so mm -hmm. it may be a good feeling right it's like oh you know i should be there but i'm not so they beat themselves up for it that they chase this thing and they're like, oh, when I'm there, I'll feel like this. Yep. That's never the case. That's right. We just want to find something else. It's not wrong. You just keep going and it's, and it's a circle and you just constantly keep beating yourself up for all of the shoulds, you know, and it's like if you can really accept that there's nothing you really should be about yourself yep. and keep doing that, you really find that everything will start to fall in, into place. And you'll even do things like stop using those like modifier words because you know, well, I shouldn't be something else or I shouldn't be someone else or I shouldn't be somewhere else. Yeah. And then you just be yourself. Just be yourself and be in the moment, be confident, be happy, be passionate. And whatever, however it's received, it's received and just be, let it be what it will be. Absolutely. So drop the shoulds. So drop dangerous. The drop the modifiers. I love that the term modifiers. I'm going to remember that. Awesome, do it. Very cool. <laughs> so Gemma, tell us more about how you work and you know who you work with and maybe give us you know some more insight into how you go about your process. Yeah, absolutely. My my I guess my process now is more in uh copywriting coaching and then merging over into more business slash life coaching as well. But my process I guess was working with businesses and it was helping them create sort of marketing strategies and the content strategies we'd put in place uh, and it would start really with you know a, an interview and we would meet each other via zoom and just get to know each other and I would start to listen to their language as well mm -hmm. and the way they spoke and wrote down mannerisms and things that they say and do so when I would go to write their copy I could start to infuse that in there that's cool I like that yeah so it was the, the way I work really is getting to know someone yep. in that way I think that's the best possible way and then I would you know create strategies content plans and you know do whatever copywriting I may be doing uh, but now it's more so one-on-one -on -one, um helping them write their copy with okay. copy coaching and and doing that but again it's you know it's working together with the person getting to know them so they, so they might come to you with something already written or some bullet yeah. points and you'll help mm -hmm. them just fine-tune it and polish it yeah absolutely yeah, yeah for sure the right words they're going to grab attention yeah yeah okay lovely and do you tend to work on particular types of copy like is it more website copy is it more email um, generated copy of it do you do do you ghost write for people as well mm. uh, i have uh, ghost written i don't as much anymore uh, but it's usually helping them with websites and their website copy because for me it's just one of the most important parts of your business it's, mm. it's like the hub the heart 
you know, so people might find you over in social or get an email from you or find you somewhere else. But to get that more information, they go to the website, you know. So that for me, that's the most important part to have your personality infused in there and, and everything. Uh, so it's mainly websites I help them with and particularly about pages because I love about pages about because pages. they really are the hardest ones to write. Yeah, yeah. So true, so true. What about um, video? Do you recommend people put video on their on their website pages as well? For sure. Next to the mm-hmm. copy. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, again, for many reasons. One, you're giving your website reader options. You know, like your website visitor. Sorry, so they may not want to read. They may want to watch something. Mm-hmm. You're also, you know, adding to it visually. And it, it's amazing for SEO purposes. If someone watches a video, they're then going to stay on that website page longer. You know, so it's oh, really cool. giving. Yeah, for sure. You know, if you have, say, a 60-second video, they're going to watch that for 60 seconds. So you're increasing your time someone spends on your website. Oh, that's very clever. Very clever. I mean, I know a lot of people that say these days, you know, I think in the next few years, the majority, 70-something percent of content on social will be video and as we move into 5g as well video is going to be able to be utilized and loaded up faster on our websites so i think it's important for people to actually use video as more and more because you know up till now a lot of people were saying oh maybe it's taking too long for the site to load because of the video but now with 5g coming in something to think about and it's not going to be an issue anymore yeah, that, 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 it's really interesting, actually. And that would be, yeah, it would be so true. Uh, and I think it's also good for, uh, you know, if you're creating content um, for inclusivity, you know, some people may not want to read the words or some people, you know, some, maybe someone's dyslexic or they don't read well or English is their second language, you know. So a video is also easier for them to watch. Yep. So if you're really wanting to create inclusive content as well, videos are, are fabulous yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I think it's a great idea. And nowadays, you know, the videos have captions as well, so you can kind of have both. Exactly. Love it. Um, so I would love to hear a an example of how you've worked with a client or, you know, how you're in the process with a couple of clients and just tell us a bit about, obviously, without mentioning any names, keeping it confidential, just give us a bit of a story. I'd love to hear about the results and you know, what kind of stuff you're doing? Yeah, sure. I actually recently worked with a, a client and she came to me because uh, she, uh, it was her recommendation. I think I can't remember right. how she found me, but yeah. So we met and, and we were, you know, having a really long chat through Zoom and, and she said, I don't know how to tell people what it is I do. I'm like, okay. so I think it's really obscure. All right, fair enough. So she told me, I'm like, mm, it's been that obscure. She's like, yeah, okay, cool. She's like, but it's boring. Right. <laughs> you make this fun. <laughs> you know, so at the time, I was like, all right, well, let's get to know you and create your brand voice first. Yep. Because, you know, if you do have something that you think is a bit dry, a bit dull, a bit boring, um, you know, if you can really put your personality into that, that's already going to uplift what you do, right? Yeah, true. Uh, and yeah, and she was really struggling as well with writing her about page. Couldn't, couldn't do it. I can't talk about myself. I can't do it. And she had done some incredible things, you know. And she, they weren't even in there. Like, what's happening? <laughs> you know. Um, and yeah, and we just yeah recreated her whole website. Just or, you know, put personality into it. I really helped her turn her features into benefits and nice, nice. Yeah, you know, really describe what she was doing. And now her about page is her most visited website page. Like people, yeah. people may sort of yeah flick on to what she does and they go straight to read about her, which is really interesting. And and yeah, she said that her just her website has, has just transformed everything. You know, people are now filling out her contact form and that whereas before they weren't because they didn't quite get what it was that that she did so beautiful beautiful. yeah i I love that it's so interesting like you know 
Years ago, you'd go to a website and you just go to where you want to go, services, price, product, yeah. done. Nowadays, done. we tend to go straight to the about page because we want to know, and it kind of goes back to what you were talking about before, about authenticity and who these people are. We want to know who the person is behind the brand. We want to know who we're going to be dealing with. We want to know if we like them, trust them, you know, have confidence in them. So it's so fascinating that everybody's going straight to the about page and that's the most highly viewed page on the site. Yeah. These and I'm not surprised. I know. It's it's so incredible. And, and realistically as well, I guess going back to that point of difference with a brand voice, you know, you're not the only person who does what you do. I know a lot of people think they are, yeah. but they're not, you know. <laughs> These days with everyone wanting to connect and, you know, work with people they want to work with, work with people they like, this is why people are going straight to an about page because they may land on your website and be like, yep, this is the thing that I want, but is this the person I want to work with and to do it, you know? And that's, yeah, that's why now it's just not about, yeah, going, jumping on a website, you know, yep, this is what I want and moving on. Or even before that, opening the yellow pages, you know. Yeah. And, and like AAA plumbing was the first one. Bang, let's go. Hey, well, let's go. That's fine. It just doesn't work that way anymore, you know. So that's why the, I guess the personality and that is so important. And at the same time, if someone doesn't like you and the way you are on your website, then they're probably not the person you want to work with yep. either, you know. So true. So true. Yeah. Amazing. I love it. I mean, it's 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 so common sense, but it's so easy to forget and we get mm -hmm. caught up with all these other things. And we get caught up with other little systems and other bells and whistles, but the basics, the the structure, the foundation's got to be right. Otherwise, all those bells and whistles just fade into comparison. Absolutely, and I love how you said that. It really is that sort of foundation, mm -hmm. you know. And and so many people do skip that. And once you've got that in place, yeah, you know, your bells and whistles will be even bigger and brighter, I guess. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so true. Awesome. So Gemma, thank you so much for coming on the show. You know, really was great to get into this kind of stuff with you. And we've kind of discovered again, how important copy is, but how we talked a bit about video and how important that is. And it all kind of fits under the brand of um, authenticity and being yourself, being confident in what you do, being yourself, and then you will find the people that that resonates with and they will become your community. And I think it's so important for people to realize that. You can't be all things to all people. You've got to just be who you are and f the people that you want to work with and that want to work with you will find you. Absolutely. So true, so true. Yeah. So how can we get in touch with you if we need to? Oh, right. Of, of course. Oh, what people want to find me? Cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's, well, it's very simple. It's contently driven. So can content ly driven nice play on words there i love it yeah 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 right cool. <laughs> there's that word nerd yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah contentlydriven.com and you'll find me at contently driven facebook instagram i'm always floating around and right. Gemma limicisi as well on linkedin so come find awesome. me all right fantastic um anything you want to leave us before we finish up oh, Any final sure. words of wisdom from Gemma? Uh, I do have many words of wisdom. <laughs> uh, I do one day plan to grow, like the, you know, the old man beard, yeah, so I can yeah. just sit there and stroke it. That's right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I don't think anyone can see me doing it, but I'm stroking my wise man beard yeah. right now. Very good. <laughs> um, it's following on from, from what you said, really, just, just be authentic in your brand. Make sure it's consistent. And if you're really struggling to do that, Go back and remember your why. So really remember, reconnect with why you started your business, why you created it. And that's really going to help you bring that out, you know, realign it with yourself, bring it out in your copy. Because often as business owners, we can forget our why because we just get so caught up in the day to day. So true. I just love that. I mean, I've, I kind of revisited that a little while back as well. And it makes so much sense. I mean, mm -hmm. why do we do what we do? What's the purpose of what? that kind of drives everything else. So if you're struggling to write your copy, reflect on the, your why, and that will help you move in the right direction. I think that's such a great point. Well done. Well, Gemma, thank you so much for coming on the show. 
I've really enjoyed chatting and I hope the audience has enjoyed watching you and listening to you as well. And um, we wish you all the very best with your, with your endeavours and hopefully we'll see you back on the show. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Well, everyone out there, have a great day and um, we'll see you very, very soon for another episode of Playing With Perspective. Bye for now.